Opinions expressed on this radio program do not necessarily reflect the views of this radio station. My friends and I always tune into the Todd Levitt Law Show. Todd is entertaining, informative, and always delivers the goods. Todd might not tell you what you want to hear, but he's going to tell you what you need to hear. And all you got to do is listen. Hold on, Todd. Don't let go. It's time for the Todd L. Levitt Law Show. Welcome to the Todd L. Levitt Marijuana Law Podcast. Good morning, good evening, and good night. I'm yours truly, Attorney Todd L. Levitt, broadcasting and podcasting from the Black Diamond Group Mothership in the middle of the Mitten, a beautiful green nutrient field, albeit covered with beautiful white snow, some mice in some places, but it's always full of nutrients, it's always green, and it's always growing. I'm in studio with my good friend, Craig Russell, the muscle, not so uh, fogged up as it was last week, Craig, but nonetheless, smells good, a bit foggy. What's happening, Craig? We, we've cleaned the whole studio out. Everything is fine. Everything has been disinfected. I had vented. no choice. It is vented. Yes. Vented well, exactly. Vented I am, well. Vented I, well. I am good, Todd. How are you? How was your uh, Valentine's Day weekend? Well, it was outstanding, and that's why we opened up the show for all the lovers out there with the Scorpions, one of my all-time top favorite <laughs> <laughs> groups uh definitely in the top five still loving you craig you know you're my brother i do love you bro but uh not in the way you know i love the the women in my life you know my my familia but uh that's why we played the scorpion still loving you for all the lovers out there uh because we just had valentine's day yes valentine's day the day of the heart and uh, I guess if you're going to play a, a love rock song there it is you could have played love stinks or something like that but instead you decided to go with that one Absolutely. And look, we have a massive, massive show for the listening audience 
today, whether you're listening on podcast at one of the 40 countries around the world. This show is now downloaded in over 40 countries on every continent. And in, in the great states now, we have the state of Illinois uh, coming in second after Michigan in regards to downloads, just thousands and thousands of downloads each week of this show on all the different podcasting platforms. And then California uh, after uh, Illinois, uh, interestingly enough. And then again, you can hear it each and every Sunday morning right on 98.5 WUPS, part of the Black Diamond Group sister stations. But uh, Craig... Let's get right to our guest. I mean, Green Farms is in the mothership today, so... uh, It sounds like a fantastic idea. Usually you tout this show for being the biggest show ever, but this literally is far and away the biggest show. We've got Jonathan and we've got Blake from Green Farms CBD in the house. Hello, Jonathan. How are you? Doing well. How are you doing? Jonathan, it's, you know, we've been promoting and teasing the audience that Green Farms uh, would be in the mothership this morning, and obviously last year... Uh, your company that we're going to talk about here in a moment was featured at the 420 Canna Hemp Expo at the Soaring Eagle Casino. And we're just so proud that you are literally our main top sponsor this year of the event. And uh, we're so pleased to have you and your company and featured in products. And uh, but so, so we got Jonathan Page Sr., uh, attorney at law, fellow attorney. And we have Blake Maddox, who is uh, vice president of farm operations Uh, for Green Farms, and obviously Jonathan being the chief executive officer. So Jonathan, tell us a little bit about Green Farms. So we're a vertically integrated seed-to-shelf hemp company, and our focus really is on farmer success. If the farmers don't win in this industry, we are not moving the industry forward. There's only one raw material that goes in to power the entire industry and that raw material is only produced one way and that's through farming it and we've got to make sure those farmers win and then we're also on the extraction side we are taking the raw material and extracting out various hemp extracts including cbd isolate outstanding and obviously cbd uh, is everywhere now you see it at gas stations grocery stores um, online people are touting you know, all these promises, almost like you, you see these old Western movies and you see some salesperson, you know, trying to sell some kind of, you know, potion. But in regards to the industry, you know, the, the great thing about green farms is that you actually care about the farmers. You care about the success of the programs and, you know, producing the purest hemp possible. That's a great thing I love about Green Farms. And you got the Green Farms Pure Strain Advantage, but producing, again, the purest hemp CBD. Can you just educate those who are tuning in for the first time what the difference between, you know, CBD, a full spectrum versus other types of CBD? We get a lot of questions in regards to the difference. So full, So you've got a hemp plant with all sorts of cannabinoids. And the full spectrum means that it's got the full spectrum of those cannabinoids in the end product. And if it's full spectrum compliant, that means that it meets the federal guidelines for being classified as hemp, which is below the the 3% threshold, 0.3% threshold for THC. So that's full spectrum. Broad spectrum just means it's the same as full spectrum with the exception that they've remediated out and remove the THC, and then CBD isolate would be, or CBG isolate or some other cannabinoid would just mean that you've isolated that, that cannabinoid on its own. And that's, that's kind of the, the most simple way to think through the differences of full spectrum, broad spectrum, isolate. And then you've got a lot of derivatives of that if you're doing water soluble or you know, various, uh, various derivatives of what you can do, do with, with the cannabinoid from there. So Green Farms teams up with farmers, as you mentioned a moment ago. Um, so you look to team up with farmers. So there's different components to what Green Farms does. Uh, can you discuss that somewhat for the audience in case somebody out there is listening who's a farmer or is in, is in the industry and is interested in partnering up with Green Farms? And by the way, you can check out greenfarmscbd.com. You can see all the information on, on what we're talking about today. So again, we started from the from a basic understanding that the farmers have to win. They've got to be able to produce a quality hemp harvest and be able to take that harvest and uh, package it in a way and dry it and get it to the right moisture content in order to be extracted and turned into an input 
that can be put into a product that ends up on the shelf. And they've got to they've got to make sure we got to make sure that they make money and that they don't have failure. And if we can't if we don't get behind the farmers and ensure that they win, this industry doesn't move forward. I mean, anybody who's jumping into this industry that's got kind of the get rich quick uh, mentality that seeing green dollars that are going to wheel and deal and make any sort of uh, venture with anybody uh, and they're only thinking about themselves and they don't have the bigger picture in mind. Those are the ones that aren't going to last. And they're the ones that, you know, will get weeded out, literally weeded out, no pun intended. <laughs> no uh, pun intended. From, uh, I like that. <laughs> we, we have built, you know, we've got a uh, 170,000 square feet facility in Michigan. And that facility, its whole purpose is to build and create a best in class genetic to provide a best in class soil mix and to bring experts together that are all dedicated and at the disposal of farmers to ensure that they have a guest free successful harvest where they will have a guaranteed output for the hemp that they've produced. So that's the farming side. So if there's a farmer out there uh, who's interested in contacting Green Farms, how can they do so? Well, Blake Maddox would be a great person to contact uh, through, but our VP of uh, sales is also somebody who can lead anybody in the right direction. His name is Charlie Packard, and it's just Charlie, C-H-A-R-L-I-E, at greenfarmcbd.com, and he'll be able to you know quickly walk anyone through the right people to get in touch with, who to talk to, um, but ultimately our goal, you know, we're, we're in an emerging market, and this is not a mature market. An emerging market's a very different type of market. And when you're in an emerging market, our belief is that every, everybody who has the right mindset, who's got passion for hemp, who understands the benefits of what hemp can do, who are working towards advancing the industry, they should be working together to help it emerge. Because although we are seeing CBD products and vape shops and gas stations and, you know, in some grocery stores, it really has not hit mass market. And I think there was a survey that was done not too long ago where they, where they went out and talked to folks in sort of the mass market. And the response they got was, well, isn't CBD marijuana? They're still not understanding the difference. And the second thing, or the second response they got, which was really interesting, is most of the people said, I intend or plan on trying CBD for the first time this year in 2020. So once you start seeing mass market try it, there'll be a compounding effect in our view, and that's when you'll see demand spike. And when demand spikes, that's when we're gonna have, um, we're gonna need to be ready and poised to deliver. And we're gonna be better able to do that if we're working together as an industry with an abundance type mindset, not a scarcity mindset, Competition is built on a scarcity mindset. You are saying that there is only so much of a resource, it's scarce, and we must compete with over that finite resource. But more of an abundance mindset and looking to the future and seeing how we can we can really propel this industry forward. I think that's the way that we work together and we, we make a difference. We are talking yeah. with uh, Jonathan Page from Green Farm CBD. We've also got Blake Maddox on the show as well. Todd, we have to take a break on the Todd Level Law Show, but when we come back, We've got uh, many more hemp questions and a couple of questions from listeners. It's the Todd L. Levitt Law Show. We'll be right back. What happens when out of the blue, the world rediscovers a prehistoric plant with the power to help heal our planet and the people who live on it? What happens is a worldwide green rush, a race to produce products with the natural benefits of hemp, a no-holds-barred game of King of the Mountain. Everyone's looking for CBD they can trust, but most haven't gotten past CBD 101. That's where we come in. At Green Farms, we relentlessly breed and refine our plants and seeds to thrive in diverse climates with maximum performance. And we define our success by how agile we are in our laboratories as we pursue innovation and perfect our extraction processes. Planting, growing, harvesting, and extracting the highest quality plants is our life's work, and we're ready to show the world how it's done. Our medical farmers are itching to fertilize the good intentions of independent farmers all across our country to build a new green coalition. Come grow with us at greenfarmscbd.com. It's 
Welcome back to the Todd L. Levitt Law Show, broadcasting and podcasting from the Black Diamond Group Mothership with my good friend Craig Russell, the muscle, and our special guest from Green Farms. Folks, listen, you have got to uh, go online and just type in greenfarmscbd.com, read everything there is to read about Green Farms, who their team is, what they stand for, uh, just their pure strain advantage. Uh, it's just an amazing company, and I'm so proud that uh, we're speaking with Jonathan Page Sr., attorney at law. I have to throw that in there. Uh, you know, um, chief executive officer of Green Farms and Blake Maddox, who's going to be on the show at some point, vice president of farm operations. Last year, Green Farms was uh, extremely prevalent at the 420 Canna Hemp Expo at the Soaring Eagle Casino. And this year, we're honored that you are the sponsor of the entire show. And Jonathan is going to be our you know, our, our, our main keynote speaker speaking on hemp. So, Jonathan, I can't wait for all our listeners to come out and meet you in person and, and listen to what you have to say, and they're definitely getting a preview here today. Um, but, again, we're talking about green farms, the hemp CBD industry. Last year, across this country, uh, in various states, states uh, licensed farmers to start farming hemp. And I just wanted to ask you if you could discuss some of the problems that existed and where you see it uh, changing for the better in the near future. So I want to start by saying we 100% know and believe and have faith that this industry is going to, it, the demand for CBD and other hemp derived products is just going to skyrocket and you know, people are going to really win in a big way who do it right, who have right the right mindset, who are working with the right people and who are doing it for the right reasons. So I, I just want to start there. But it's an emerging market. And with an emerging market, you're going to have, you know, three steps forward and two steps back. That's just the reality. You take you get three steps forward and then there's two steps back. And last year we had a lot of folks who I would say were sold a fairy tale. You had people who went to farmers and said, we're going to pay you $4 uh, point. So if you take like the concentration of CBD, for example, if it's 10% concentration, they would take four times 10, which is 40. They'd be getting $40 a pound and they would sign what they were calling futures contracts, which meant by at the time that they harvested or sometime afterwards, 
the the person the farmer signed the contract with with would then be obligated to pay for the hemp at that price point. And what ultimately happened is you had a smaller market. It was volatile, and when you're dealing with a smaller market, things uh, es- you know go up and down very quickly. It's not like a mature market where where those sort of things take time. Here, things can you know prices can go up quick and they can go right back down. And you had a situation where harvest came along and the prices for CBD isolate, the prices for other hemp derived products just went down. And so you were in a situation where you had an extractor or oftentimes it was a guy in his garage who made the contract with the farmer and they're, you know, looking at their contract and it says they've got to buy it, you know, at $4 a point and for them to buy it, extract it and actually put something into the market would mean that they would have to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, in our view, the person who made that contract should have honored that contract. But the reality of it is they didn't. They didn't because they weren't going to, you know, they didn't want to lose hundreds of thousands of dollars because they made a bad deal. And ultimately, the farmers are the ones who 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 suffered. And, you know, we need to correct that. So what we do, like through our farmer success program, our focus is teaching the business side of growing hemp. And we always tell farmers, you have to know how the person you're contracted with is making their money. They know how you're making your money. You need to know how they're making their money. Because for any supply chain to work, and and hemp, there's there's no difference with hemp. Everyone in the supply chain has to make money. That's the business that we're in. That's the business of any business. And so we tell them how we make money. And we show them this is how we win and this is how you win. And this is why this arrangement's more realistic. And we realized in doing a bunch of roundtables with farmers, um, you know, we had some ideas about how to how to make farmers successful or help them be successful. But they we really they told us they said this this is what we want. And I still remember this. We had a farmer. We were in a roundtable discussion and he looked over at us. He said, Jonathan, if I had a crystal ball. And I could put my hand on that crystal ball. And I knew that at harvest, I was going to make $1,000 a profit per acre. Crystal ball looked at it, and I knew that. I would do business with you in a second. Even over the person who told me I was going to make $20,000 in profit per acre. Because under traditional agriculture, I was only doing $300 in profit per acre. $1,000 is so much better. And if that's really the reasonableness of, of what I should expect. I just want to be told that. I don't want people telling me that I'm making $20,000 in profit per acre when that's when that's not actually supported by the business of, of hemp. And so we took that to heart and started working with farmers to figure out how we can get them focused on making a profit per acre, not, get a, not focus them on price per point or price per pound, because at the end of the day, they need to make, they need to make profit. Um, and that's 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 our belief. That's our that's where we we believe. You know, there was a lot of failure, um, and there was failure because we had a volatile industry. We had bad actors. We had people who didn't really have a passion for the industry. They were more just trying to get rich quick. And those folks, they're going to die away. People are going to, pe- you know, there's going to be karma, and people are going to find out who 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 are the people who really care about the industry, who are advocates for the industry, who are trying to do good and move the industry forward. And, you know, I, we believe that the market will ultimately emerge and those who have that passion, who have that right mindset will emerge with it and they'll be successful. Can I throw a couple of cliches out at you there, Jonathan? Sure. How about the cream always rises to the top? <laughs> How about that like one? And, and here's another one. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Absolutely. It's because yeah. because it, it sounds like you guys are much more on the realistic look. Here's what you really can expect, not just a song and a dance to try and get you to work with them. You guys sound like you're legitimately look. We're going to get you the honest answer, not just tell you something you want to hear so you'll do business with us. And that is that's I mean that's what every anybody who does any kind of business that's who you want to deal with. People who are going to treat you fairly and also treat you with respect and not try and uh, insult your intelligence. Come on. And the greatest yeah. thing I love about your company, Jonathan, I mean, you've literally, because I've, one, I know, I know, I know your company. I know what you do and who you are. Um, that's why we're so stoked to have you at the uh, 420 Canna Hemp Expo. Uh, it's not just as our main sponsor and the largest exhibit, but also as our keynote speaker. Um, but you've just recruited, 
you know, the brightest and boldest minds from the industry, industry from expert medical farmers to geneticists and scientists to ranchers, you know, even beekeepers and business leaders. Tell me about the beekeepers because I was interested in that. I mean, how, how does that uh, interact with the industry? Well, we're ultimately our goal is to produce a best in class genetic to ensure that we're growing seedlings, plant starts that are going to do well in any hardiness zone. And it's different, you know, different genetics per hardiness zone. So you're right. We did focus on bringing in all all sorts of experts. We've got an integrated pest management uh, specialist. We have a soil specialist. We have, you know, all of our uh, field hands, so to speak, and a greenhouse all came from uh, the Department of Agriculture and um, Michigan State University, and we partnered with that department. But more than anything, we're, you know, we are blessed. Um, we just, uh, I, I, I get to work with this team each and every day, and I'm, uh, it's a, uh, it's just a blessing for me to be able to uh, be with them and to work with them and to see how passionate they are about making a difference in this industry. And so we, we, got, we got lucky in a way. We, we, we were grateful that we were able to attract some really talented minds, Blake Maddox being one of those, um, who's just uh, so exceptional and, and so, so eager to make a difference in this, in this industry. Um, so even from our, our bee program and the, and the honey that we, we produce, um, we're, we're trying all different types of tactics. We're figuring out what I call cause and effect, the causes that will lead to the right results um, and repeating those so that we can ultimately make, you know, farmers successful and make those, uh, those industries that are, are, who are trying to bring product to market successful. Great info, Jonathan. And speaking of Blake Maddox, we have to go to break, but when we come back in the mothership here, the Todd L. Levitt Law Show with Green Farms, Jonathan Page Sr., and Blake Maddox. We're going to be joined by Blake Maddox, and I uh, look forward to seeing Blake in person again. We met Blake last year, Craig. We did at the uh, 420 Canahemp Expo, which is coming up on the 18th. Uh, details, you can get it at 420canaexpo.com to find out about how uh, you can get in to see uh, Jonathan, who was one of the, the keynote speaker about hemp. You can see uh, information about all the exhibits and about the uh, casino as well. You guys might not know, this is the biggest casino east of the Mississippi, size-wise, in the United States. Because I know, Jonathan, you guys are in Las Vegas right now. Um, that's where you're at this weekend. But uh, this, so you're, are you at a casino? You guys are at a casino right now, Jonathan? We're at the Las Vegas Convention Center. We're staying at the Westgate. Oh, right on. So, I mean, because it's not like there's not a thousand casinos in Las Vegas. but There's a big hemp conference out there, right? Correct, Jonathan? Yeah, it's a CBD conference, and uh, we're, we're attending there. I was hoping to meet Elvis since we're at the Westgate, but... <laughs> I didn't run into him. Uh, you, How about you, Celine Dion, one of my all-time five top favorite performers, Celine Dion, together with all the other Canadian performers out there in Vegas. By the way, a big shout-out to uh, Nickelback, speaking of Canadian groups, Nickelback as we go to break, correct, Craig? Is that okay? Big shout-out to Nickelback? I guess if you want to shout-out to Nickelback, it's your show. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> no, I was going to say we shouted out Celine Dion, and you know, and uh, we got to give out. a big shout-out to Nickelback. Nickelback, all right. Well, there you go. Chad Kroger's the man. Uh, when we come back, we'll have uh, Blake Maddox on uh, from Green Farms. It is the Todd L. Levitt Law Show. We'll be right back. What happens when out of the blue, the world rediscovers a prehistoric plant with the power to help heal our planet and the people who live on it? What happens is a worldwide green rush, a race to produce products with the natural benefits of hemp, a no-holds-barred game of King of the Mountain. Everyone's looking for CBD they can trust, but most haven't gotten past CBD 101. That's where we come in. At Green Farms, we relentlessly breed and refine our plants and seeds to thrive in diverse climates with maximum performance. And we define our success by how agile we are in our laboratories as we pursue innovation and perfect our extraction processes. Planting, growing, harvesting, and extracting the highest quality plants is our life's work, and we're ready to show the world how it's done. Our medical farmers are itching to fertilize the good intentions of independent farmers all across our country to build a new green coalition. Come grow with us at greenfarmscbd.com. Look at this photograph. Every time I do, it makes me laugh. How did our eyes get so red? And what the hell is on Joey's head? And this is where I grew up. I think the president would have fixed it up. I never knew we ever went without. The second floor is high. 
start the sneaking up And this is where I went to school Most of the time I better face to do Criminal record says I broke him twice I must have done it half a dozen times I wonder if it's too late Should I go back and try to graduate? Last man and now it was back then If I was them I wouldn't let me Welcome back to the Todd L. Levitt Law Show. Coming back strong with some Nickelback, Craig. Boy, wow. you shocked me there. Thank you for the Nickelback. And that goes out to all of our friends to the north. We have a huge, huge following up in Canada. And obviously, for those listening in the 40-plus countries around the world, the great state of Michigan is the Mitten State. We look like a Mitten. And if you meet someone from Michigan, they will point where on the hand that they are from Canada is just to the north, and when I grew up in Metro Detroit, it was only 20 minutes under the under the tunnel to the to Canada to the Canadian bars, Craig. So we love Canada, and that's why we came back with some Nickelback. Nickelback, gee, I don't know. I don't hold that against you, Todd, but Nickelback, really? Nickelback? Come on, Craig. Come, Come on, on, man. Come on, Todd. Come on, uh, Craig. Big huge show we've got going on here. Uh, the guys from uh, Green Farm CBD are in the house. Uh, of course, they are our big title sponsor of the 420 Canna Hemp Expo coming up on the 18th of April. And uh, joining us now in the mothership, the vice president of farm operations himself, Blake Maddox. Blake, hey! Hey, guys. Hey. Thanks for having me. Blake, you were a star last year uh, representing uh, Green Farms. And uh, truly, I mean, the, the response to you being there and all the information you provided to the attendees at the you know the casino on the 420 can of hemp expo which by the way falls on 418 this year and once again free to the public i mean we're just so excited to have your company as the main sponsor you know and uh, we're happy to have you back for sure well thank you guys for having us back we had a great time last year and you know we're all really passionate about what we do and love what we do so it makes it easy getting out there and informing people now, you know why Todd brought up Nickelback, don't you? Because I heard a couple of ladies at the expo last year make mention of the fact you kind of have a resemblance to Chad Kroger. Not saying that's a bad thing at all. I think that's a that's good the, thing. That's a first. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. So tell us a little bit about you, Blake. What is your background and uh, what exactly is the vice president of farm operations at, at uh, Green Farms do? So what I do for Green Farms, being the vice president of farm operations, I work with a lot of our consulting clients. We bring them on board. We help traditional ag farmers transition over from their traditional crops into hemp. Not only do we do that, but we offer our consulting services as part of our farmer success program. We offer genetics, which we breed in-house under a greenhouse roof. Um, And, you know, we're, we're trying to help not only educate and kick the stigma of hemp being cannabis, but also we are uh, working with farmers trying to get them from, you know, traditional ag and utilizing um, all of the sprays and salts that they utilize in traditional ag. That's not necessarily um, what you should be using on something that's a consumable or something that you uh, incinerate. And so now, talk a little bit about hemp in this country. I know Jonathan was talking a little bit about a lot about the industry. Um, hemp is a legal product in the in this country in the fifty states due to the Farm Bill, but uh, some places in the country it's not as uh, welcome as other things. Explain some of the challenges that you guys find when it comes to dealing with uh, states and areas that aren't as hemp friendly as other places are. Right. Yeah. Well. So. Um I'm originally from South Alabama, and so I'm from the Bible Belt, and so that stigma is still very strong down there. It's right. still considered cannabis and weed, and you know, it's you uh, tell people you're utilizing that, and they give you a funny look, um, and that's still all over the country. Um, people are still in their 
old ways, which is understandable. Uh, but at the same time, this crop can be utilized for numerous things, as you guys know, whether it's um, for a textile or for CBD products. So a big part of what we do is we put on these events all over the country. Um, lately, we've specifically been gearing towards farmers to help educate different farmers and um, conservation district groups on what the crop is, how it can help bring back traditional agriculture and bring money back to these farmers who, um, you know, prices have really dwindled lately on soy and corn, um, which are the main crops and cereals in Michigan. Um, I was just at an event uh, last weekend where they were talking about how low the prices are falling out as well as what corn prices and ethanol prices are getting to. So, you know, this is a, not a new market. I mean, it's new to the time, but um, this is something that farmers are totally capable of doing and hopefully bringing back agriculture as a whole. Now, like you mentioned, Michigan, and of course, Michigan is not only a medicinal cannabis state, but a medical cannabis state. Do you find that places where cannabis is legal, that people are more open and into possibly doing something to do with hemp than, say, other places where it's not? Uh, yes and no. Um, like as of right now, you know, I'm working with a couple of different townships that we're trying to work into with different farmers and they still have the stigma thinking that it's um, cannabis. So though it is a cannabis plant, we still have some townships that we have to go in and actually educate the township as a whole and their groups, um, though they can't opt out with it being hemp and federally legal with the farm bill they still have this stigma. So what we're really trying to do out there is just get the information out there because there's a lot of misinformation. And so the biggest thing is educating. Um, and that's what we're spending a lot of our time on right now. And that's mainly what I'm focusing on. Especially with CBD products popping up in almost every industry from you know hair products to makeup to rubbing lotions, sport creams. Um, you know, There's a lot of companies out there across this country and the world and you don't even know what's in it. I mean, you can go to the local store in any state, purchase something just because it says CBD. Everybody thinks it's a wonder, a wonder product that it's going to cure all their pains and ailments. And that's not actually accurate, Blake, is it? No, it's not. And they did do a study a while back where they went around and collected um, products from different stores. And, you know, in Michigan, they're everywhere. They're gas stations. Uh, that's the biggest thing that I've seen family video in Michigan <laughs> yep. uh, promoting and things like that. And, you know, some pla some places like family video and things like that are trying to use it to stay relevant. But at the same time, they took these products and tested them and they the majority of them did not have what they stated was in the product. So not only are they not actually putting CBD into the products, but again, you don't know where that's coming from. Um, you don't know if that product was created with synthetics, um, synthetic nutrients with pesticides in the field. And so there's just still, that goes back to the, the educating the masses and educating the people that are trying to use it, the consumers, because a lot of these products, like we're walking around right now at the, the Vegas Expo and people are handing out uh, samples and products left and right, but nobody's educating the consumer on how to utilize it. Now, is that something that you guys deal with? Because obviously there's a, a lot of some places you have to test a lot more than other places. Is that anything I would imagine at some point the government's going to get involved with that? But is that anything? Is that a service that you guys offer? So we do. And we um, have a full panel test unit that we utilize um, in house. That's mostly for the genetics that we breed. So what our goal is with those genetics, we're trying to create a stable genetic that is vetted for the region, uh, especially Michigan. Um, most genetics that are out there right now are coming from Oregon, Colorado, and California. And though those are great in their region, they don't necessarily hold up, especially when Michigan was as wet as it was this past year, and it's looking like it's going to be very similar this season. So we're trying to create genetics in our greenhouses that are bred for our region and then testing them in the fields. And by having that test unit in-house, our goal is to be able to start giving results with our seeds or our plant starts to show you what your highs and lows for your THC content, your CBD content will be weekly throughout your term. So then we can also recommend when we would harvest that. That being said, with our farmer success program, anybody that's working as one of our farmer affiliates, we would be able to test their products weekly also so that before they have to submit that to the state for the state testing, we can allow them to be confident that their product's not going to be hot 
So in other words, kind of like garbage in, garbage out. Are these other, you know, when you get handed a sample at a show in Vegas or you go to a gas station, somebody goes and tests that product and find it is not exactly what it says. You are, you're starting that right from the get-go. You're having legitimate farmers with legitimate products and you're making sure they're testing. So when they do end up sending that off to, uh, to sell to somebody else, that they already know they're getting a quality product right off the bat. Yeah, exactly. So as your company, you're working with farmers. So if somebody out there is listening, which we hope there's more than 20 people, especially the Amish and some of our family members, but we're positive <laughs> there's more than 20, right, Craig? Well, there, if we're downloaded in 40 countries, there's got to at least be 40 people. So there's exactly. that. <laughs> but if, 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 if there's a farmer out there in any state in our great country, or any country for that matter that can grow hemp, they can contact you at Green Farms cbd.com correct green farms cbd.com is your website great information there's a contact uh menu there through the contact button page link i should say uh, so once they contact you and you actually start working with the farmers once once the the crop is is produced does your company assist those farmers with the next steps to to assist them with the processing uh, the purchasing, the sales? Um, yes, we do. So um, the way things work, we do have a great marketing and sales team, so they can help bring in deals for farmers. Um, but with our farmer success program, not only are we helping the farmers get into this new crop with as cheap as possible by helping cover as much cost as we can with the plant starts, but then we're also offering them three different outlets on the back end so they can, we can purchase all their biomass outright, right at harvest, and they can get a check then and there. Um, we can take it and prep it for processing so we can dry it, mill it, and process it. Or we can also take it all the way to a final product or s- help them sell that isolate and then give them a better return. So depending on how quickly the farmer wants to get paid out or how long they want to hang in there, we can get them better um, deals for their product. That's great information. And again, you, you your company, Green Farms, is the main sponsor. This year, can't say it enough, uh, Blake and Jonathan, of the 420 Canna Hemp Expo taking place when, Craig, and where? It's on the 18th of April, but it is still technically 420 because it is in 2020, which is worn right now, uh, at the Soaring Eagle Casino and Resort in Mount Pleasant, uh, the biggest casino east of the Mississippi. It's a five-diamond resort. You remember this from last year, Blake. It's a fantastic uh, venue. Not only is it for uh, entertainment stuff, but also for uh, conferences and for expos like what we have, plus also uh, lodging and dining and everything. Uh, they really do a great job. No, we had a great time last year. It was a great turnout, and we really didn't know what to expect with it being the first year that you guys put it on. And, you know, we're, we're back again, and we're ready to be there again. So Bigger and better than ever. It will be. Uh, we already know this at this point. We already know there's going to be a lot more exhibitors. We also know uh, that uh, CBDs and hemp and things are going to be allowed. Uh, the Travel Council has allowed us to do that. So uh, we do have to take a break on the Todd L. Level Law Show. When we come back, we will wrap up the show of uh, Blake and Jonathan on from Green Farms And we'll uh, wrap the show up. Coming back. What happens when out of the blue, the world rediscovers a prehistoric plant with the power to help heal our planet and the people who live on it? What happens is a worldwide green rush, a race to produce products with the natural benefits of hemp, a no-holds-barred game of King of the Mountain. Everyone's looking for CBD they can trust, but most haven't gotten past CBD 101. That's where we come in. At Green Farms... We relentlessly breed and refine our plants and seeds to thrive in diverse climates with maximum performance. And we define our success by how agile we are in our laboratories as we pursue innovation and perfect our extraction processes. Planting, growing, harvesting, and extracting the highest quality plants is our life's work, and we're ready to show the world how it's done. Our medical farmers are itching to fertilize the good intentions of independent farmers all across our country to build a new green coalition. Come grow with us at greenfarmscbd.com. Time in its 
Welcome back to the Todd L. Levitt Law Show. Coming back strong once again with the Scorpions. Still loving you, Craig. Everybody still loves you. The water is wet. The sky is blue. And we love you. Can't say it enough, Craig. You know, if it wasn't Valentine's weekend, I would probably give you a hard time about it. But I'm just going to go ahead and accept your big Valentine box of chocolates and go with it. We are wrapping up the end of the show here with uh, the big show with uh, the guys from Green Farms uh, CBD. It's uh, Blake Maddox and Jonathan Page. Uh, guys, we were going to touch a little bit about uh, extraction. I know that's a part of your business that you do. Um, and that is a vital part of not only the hemp business in this country, but of what you do, because it, there's just not enough of it out there, is there? No, there's really not. And um just a little information for you. So I know a lot of people are doing broad spectrum and full spectrum, but we're truly trying to stick to isolate. That being said, it's the only way to really be consistent isolating that. So um, recently there was a group that was approached by the Coca-Cola group and they were trying to see how much isolate was on the floor across the country because they do have interest of getting involved. And once they found out how much there was out there, they said that wouldn't even be enough for one batch of what they would be looking to do. So there's just still not the infrastructure there yet for any of these larger companies to get on. And they're going to be on soon, aren't they? This is, the, like you said, this is an emerging business. This is almost like uh, somebody, you know, saying, hey, that's Steve Jobs guy. He's building a pretty cool computer over there. Maybe we'd want to get involved. This is about where we're at in the in the hemp, in the CBD uh, space in this country, correct? Oh, yeah, definitely. And, you know, these things, they, they are out there. They're just, you know, they're they're waiting for there to be an infrastructure. And so, you know, you keep hearing all this misinformation that the market's flooded. There's too much biomass. There's too much this and that. Well, that might be correct for now, but there are none of these big players out here yet actually getting involved. Once that happens, I mean, you know, even just from the textile side of things, there will never be a biofuel industry made from hemp or, you know, Ford has already committed to wanting to be able to utilize um, hemp and their door panels but you can't have an American-made car company importing hemp panels from China. No. So they can't get involved. You can't get Coca-Cola involved until there's enough product out here, and they're not going to be utilizing the uh, full spectrums. They're going to want something that is consistent. So everyone keeps saying things are 
completely saturated, but that's just inaccurate. All these other guys are waiting to get into the game. So there's no product there. Can I ask you a, a speculation question purely? Are any of these big companies going to get into this at some point? Because it, you would think they would want to just control the whole thing like they do all the rest of their businesses. They definitely will. I don't see someone like Coca-Cola growing their own hemp, though. They may contract farmers, but the majority of them are their companies like that are going to contact labs and try to get the uh, the already processed product. So obviously, if you are a farmer or you somebody you are somebody who's interested in this space, coming to the 420 Can of Hemp Expo coming up on the 18th of April and talking to Blake and talking to Jonathan and talking to the people at Green Farms, this is going to be a, a great wealth of opportunity for you because I, you like you just said they're not they're going to contract out to people well who are those people going to be they're going to be people who contact you and say you know i'm interested in this what do i need to do come see you guys at the uh, 420 can hemp expo and ask questions and get information and then hopefully you can start your path on a brand new business in life yeah well, we would love to help anybody get involved in this and like i said there's just there's not the infrastructure there yet so that's why we're out there trying to educate and we're trying to make it as easy as possible for people that do want to get involved and we really look forward to meeting everyone at the event. Fantastic. And we'll have uh, Blake and Jonathan back on the show uh, at least once or twice prior to the expo taking place. Make sure you get out. It's free to the public again this year. It's one of the only that I know of uh, cannabis hemp expos anywhere in the Midwest that's actually free to the public um, to get into the main floor, that is. So, uh, Jonathan, uh, Blake, hey, we'd like to... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to put Jonathan back on for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. But, Blake, so great talking to you. We had a great time with you last year. All the uh, attendees are just so excited to uh, meet and and speak with you guys and at Green Farms again. So, definitely. Well, thank you again for having us. We uh, we really look forward to being back again this year. Jonathan, uh, we do appreciate. We know you're out in Vegas. We know you are busy. But you're never too busy to talk to the farmers and all the in individuals out there who are interested in being part of this amazing industry here, the uh, CBD hemp industry and everything that comes along with it. Uh, you're definitely going to be the keynote speaker at our big uh, expo coming up in April. And uh, Jonathan, again, we just really appreciate Green Farms. And if somebody out there wants to get in contact with Green Farms, how can they do so? So the best way to get in contact with me personally would be Jonathan, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N, at Green Farms CBD. Dot com and any of our if you look at our website and look under the team you know our main executive team it's just their first name at greenfarmscbd.com so everybody is everybody wants to help everybody wants to help move this industry forward and advance and and help the right people do the right things so uh, everybody would be would be eager and happy to help in any way that they could Good quality stuff. Todd, I hate to break the news to you. Jonathan, I hate to break the news to you as well, but the show is over. We got to go. Again, I can't thank Jonathan and Blake enough and all the folks at Green Farms and all their partners. It's always an education when we, we speak to Jonathan and Blake. I learned so much. and I know. You know, there's always so much to learn, and they're definitely leaders in the industry. So uh, definitely get in contact with these uh, great folks. But, Craig, what a great show. Hope to have Jonathan on here in the next, uh, the you know, a couple times before the expo, that's for sure. Yep. And uh, hey, we got to go. We're not here for a long time. We're here for a good time. Take us out with some scorpions for all the lovers out there. See you next week.
The Todd L. Levitt Law Show, brought to you by Chad Malley Well Drilling of Rosebush, Clark Modular Homes, your most experienced and trusted builder in Mount Pleasant, and attorney Todd L. Levitt, not just a litigator, he's an advocator. Opinions expressed on this radio program do not necessarily reflect the views of this radio station.